You've probably heard about Karl Marx and his theories about capitalism and its eventual downfall. At its heart, Marx's manifesto posits that there are two classes constantly struggling with each other. The working class or proletariat are increasingly exploited by the capitalists or bourgeoisie who reap surplus value from the labors of the former. Marx hypothesizes that, sooner or later, the proletariat will rise in a revolution to overthrow the bourgeoisie. While the author admits the merits of Marx's theories, he counters them with viewpoints of his own. Firstly, Marx has driven out the possibility of a third class. This third class of entrepreneurs constantly innovates in an attempt to ascend in terms of class. Besides, Marx's prophecies that the income gap between the rich and the poor increasing didn't come true. At least, not in Schumpeter's time. Regardless, the author maintains that capitalism has facilitated leaps in improving people's lifestyles and aided in many forms of progress. Much like Marx, Schumpeter believed in the cyclical nature of economics. Whereas Marx focused on how economic revolutions are bound to happen, Schumpeter held on to the belief that capitalism was constantly reinvigorating itself. Due to competition or the fear of it, businesses are constantly fighting to improve and come up with newer products, lower prices, and more effective marketing. Through a process of creative destruction, capitalism transforms itself in the way industries rise and fall in popularity and usefulness. For all his counter-arguments against Marx's theories, Schumpeter acknowledges that socialism can work. Unlike capitalism which regulates itself through constant competition, socialism is strictly regulated by a central authority. Many economists doubt the feasibility of this system as it seems impossible to issue value to products and services. After all, prices don't necessarily have a place in a socialist system. In Schumpeter's view, a socialist system could work much like a capitalist one, with the clear difference that no competition exists. Thus, you can provide everyone with a share of all goods produced within the system. Things get even more complicated when democracy comes into the picture. Politicians are only people, after all, and are prone to put their priorities first. Furthermore, our current definition of democracy is flawed. We rely on the people to make good choices to elect officials to form the government. From there, these politicians need to make good on their promises. Beyond this, not everyone gets a vote. Even if they did, would everyone's choice represent the best choice for everyone? One better way of looking at democracy is by viewing it as a way for individuals to compete for people's votes. Once they have it, they are free to implement the political decisions that they have championed. This makes the reality clearer that the people choose the government and the choices it makes. Regardless, democracy may be eroded under either system. Both capitalism and socialism can only work when specific conditions are met in society. Democracy requires good leaders, a well-oiled bureaucracy, and control, but not over everything. It is undeniable that capitalism has brought about leaps in human progress. However, this spirit of innovation will eventually end despite capitalism's role in maintaining it. For one thing, in the quest to gain more capital, enterprises need to focus on increasingly smaller niches. As everything becomes more expensive, the future seems bleak and hopeless. Without hope for the future, people become despondent and only seek to survive in the short term. Capitalism is essentially self-defeating and will one day come crumbling down.